My name is Ben Greenfield, and on this episode of the Ben Greenfield Life Podcast... If we think a human being is a machine, a very complicated machine, but nonetheless a machine, like all machines, we are as strong as our weakest part. So if one can know where your weak points are, or if you don't know what your weak points are, do you know what your family's weak points are? You know, diabetes, cancer, heart disease, whatever it is, you can focus on that. Faith. Family, fitness, health, performance, nutrition, longevity, ancestral living, biohacking, and a whole lot more. Welcome to the show. So here's the deal. You've probably heard of earthing or grounding. And clinical research has shown that this stuff works, getting in touch with the planet. The problem is we can't all walk outside in our bare feet like dirty hippies Maybe you work indoors and you have difficulty getting access to the earth or the ground to earth or ground. And so you're missing out on all the electrons you absorb when touching the planet. Those electrons neutralize free radical damage. They squelch inflammation. They restore healthy endocrine function. They enhance cellular gating and circulation, which improves the cellular uptake of nutrients and oxygen and hormones and maximizes the removal of cellular waste. The list goes on and on. But what this company, Ultimate Longevity, has done is they've created all these mats, mats for your mattress, for your pillow, blankets, things you can stand in while you're at your desk. They originally designed them for sleeping, but they can be used anywhere. You can travel with these ground therapy mats, including the ability to be able to put them on your bed while you're sleeping at, say, like a hotel if you want to be grounded give you six to eight hours of uninterrupted grounding. And more time means more beneficial electrons, means greater results. It's a full body grounding process, which maximizes the electron transfer way beyond what you get from just your feet. So you get healing electrons at the time when your body does most of its healing and repair if you're using the sleep mat, which means during the entire night of sleep. So over 20 peer-reviewed research studies have been published on the health effects of grounding We're talking inflammation, sleep, pain, stiffness, circulation, wound healing, HRV, vagal tone, serum electrolytes, thyroid function, blood viscosity, blood glucose, even things like depression and anxiety and tiredness and fatigue and mood are all affected by grounding. Ultimate Longevity is the place to go for grounding products. Here's the URL to visit for an exclusive offer, ultimatelongevity.com slash Ben. That's where you can get grounding mats for your mattress, your pillow, your blankets, a whole bunch of valuable grounding and earthing tools to help you bring down inflammation, jumpstart healing, increase energy. So this is how you can biohack your relationship with the planet Earth. Ultimatelongevity.com slash Ben is where you want to go. I got my latest shipment just in time for winter sports and physical activities, and I'm happy. It's my clothing shipment. There's probably, when you see me in videos and photos and stuff like that, one brand of clothing that I'm wearing more than any other brand. It's called Viori, V-U-O-R-I. My wife wears their performance joggers, which she swears is like the softest joggers she owns. They come in a bunch of new colors. You got to hurry up and get these new colors while you can because they sell out quick. You go to viori.com slash Ben, V-U-O-R-I.com slash Ben. And they'll give you 20% off your first purchase and free shipping on any order that's over 75 bucks and free returns. But they also have the leggings with a high waist, a drawstring tie, and no slip fit for girls. They've got their core short, which is their super comfortable men's lined athletic short with like compression built into performance. And then they got a men's performance jogger, which is awesome and super comfortable and great for lounging around on Christmas morning or Thanksgiving. I'm just saying. So Viori.com slash Ben, V-U-O-R-I.com slash Ben is where you can go to discover the versatility of Viori clothing for yourself. This podcast is also brought to you by Bioptimizers. Now, Bioptimizers has this cool thing going on. So what they're doing is for a limited time only, if you buy three bottles of their Magnesium Breakthrough, they're going to give you a bunch of cool gifts with your purchase, including things like blue light blocking glasses and other cool biohacker gear and some neat goodies. But Magnesium Breakthrough alone is a neat goodie because it gives you all seven types of magnesium. It's like a shotgun formula for magnesium. It's a -a one-of-a-kind product designed to reverse low levels of magnesium, which is practically an epidemic that causes a multitude of health problems. 
The thing that sets magnesium breakthrough apart is it can impact the release of stress hormones like cortisol and block the activity of more stimulating neurotransmitters, leading to a more peaceful and resting state. And I like to take about six of these at night before I go to bed. Dosage may vary. I like that it kind of gives you a nice smooth bowel movement the next morning anyways. So while most people find focus on finding relief through meditation or trips to the spa, the root cause of stress is actually a deficiency in a key nutrient, magnesium. And you can fix that with magnesium breakthrough. It acts like a break on your body's nervous system, helping to calm and soothe and give you a better quality of life. So here's how you get in on the exciting gifts that they're going to give you with your purchase and get 10% off magnesium breakthrough. You go to magbreakthrough.com slash Ben. That's magbreakthrough.com slash Ben and use code Ben10. That'll give you a 10% discount on mag breakthrough. Hey, a quick thing before we dive into today's episode. Uh, the connection, the internet connection with Dr. Mikens, uh, he's all the way over in England. I'm in the U.S. on a snowy, icy day, which probably didn't help. Uh, but the uh, the connection was a little bit tough in the beginning for about the first half hour or so. There's, there's a, a little bit of a staticiness to his voice. I apologize. The information is still fantastic. It really clears up after about a half hour. But I just want to let you know that the audio is not as pristine as I would like for it to be, but it's a, it's a great show anyways, and I hope you get a lot out of it. I learned a ton. Here we go. Well, folks, I've done a few episodes on peptides, uh, peptide therapy, and uh, th this whole emerging world of what I consider to be one of the frontiers of anti-aging and longevity and medicine and regenerative medicine. And many of you I know have looked into or even used peptides, whether it's like, you know, growth hormone precursors that you might take at night, like uh, ipamorelin or injectable peptides for inflammation, you know, with the Star Wars robots names like BPC-157 and TB-500. And so, you know, we, we, we've talked about those a little bit before, and I'll certainly link in the show notes to some of those previous discussions. But what I haven't talked about much before on the show and what is a subset of peptides that are absolutely intriguing, as you're going to find out, are peptide bioregulators, peptide bioregulators. And, and these things can be taken orally as a supplement. They've kind of been an emerging secret of the anti-aging and longevity world for the past few years. They're just now starting to hit the mainstream. And essentially, they, they communicate with specific sections of your DNA, and they've, they've uh, been shown to activate genes for cellular regeneration and to help regulate gene expression and protein synthesis. And uh, they've actually been researched quite a bit over in Russia by this professor named uh, Vladimir Kavinsen. And my guest on today's show just so happens to have extensively studied Kavinsen's work and is considered to be one of the world's leading experts on anti-aging and peptide bioregulators and a whole lot more. His name is Phil Mikens. My, Phil, is it Mikens or Meekins? I'm, I, we, you just told me right before the show started and now I'm blanking. Go either way, but if you want to do it the family way, it's Mikens. <laughs> Mikens. Hopefully, you have a peptide bioregulator for memory. Um, so, so Phil <laughs> Mikens is a is a guy who has degrees in food and vitamin technology and pharmacy and biochemistry. He's been involved in the anti aging world since the late eighties. Uh, he's he's been all over the place in books and magazines and radio and TV shows. He has a cool magazine too. He's the editor in chief of this great magazine. I just found it and. I've read a few issues called Aging Matters Magazine, Aging Matters Magazine. If you get a chance, check that one out as well. And I'll link to everything that Phil and I talk about if you go to bengreenfieldlife.com slash Mikens, M-I-C-A-N-S, bengreenfieldlife.com slash Mikens. So, Phil, welcome to the show, man. Well, thank you, Ben. It's a great pleasure. I've been looking forward to chatting with you. Yeah, yeah, me too. And, and I mean, I, your your company... Uh, had even sent me a big box of all your different bioregulators and and these uh, these eye drops that my wife are using that apparently can save or improve vision and you you've got all sorts of interesting things that you're up to but these peptide bioregulators I think they're absolutely fascinating and and I, there's a lot of regenerative medicine docs in the U S who I respect use them extensively in their practice but I've never really had a, a good chat about what they are and how they work so I I figured you and me could dive in so. 
Uh, you know, I'd, I'd love to hear a little bit more about your anti-aging protocol yourself too, being an expert in this whole realm. And so, so we'll get to that also, but let's, let's start with a peptide bioregulator. What exactly is a, a peptide bioregulator and how did they come to be? Okay. Um, the come to be is quite a long story, although I will shorten it as much as possible. Um, what they are, um, they are short chain peptides. Um, specifically that is made up of two, three, or four amino acids. Um, Because, of course, once you start, you know, peptides are made of amino acids. And, of course, depending on the length of the chain and the placement of where the amino acid is in the chain dictates what kind of peptide you have. And, of course, the longer they get, they, they turn into proteins and then they can even turn into some of the hormones. So, for example, uh, human growth hormone is made up of uh, 191 amino acids. But these peptide bioregulators are very short. And a quick question, by the way, you, you said the peptide bioregulators are like three to, to, to four different amino acids. If, if we're talking about like a peptide, let's say like a popular one, like um, BPC-157, right? Like a lot of people use that for injuries. Is it, how, how many amino acids approximately would that be? I've forgotten the exact number of BPC-157, but I hesitate a guess at around 15. Okay. So um, I think that's the kind of number it would be. So maybe like three to five times higher number of amino acid chains than a peptide bioregulator? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. There is another key word in that expression, though, and that is the word bioregulator. And it would be true to say that even if you have a a peptide in front of you that's made up of two, three or four um, uh, amino acids, take, for example, carnosine, which which is two amino acids, uh, a dipeptide, of correct terminology, um, it's not known to be a bioregulator. That is an additional term that the Russian studies and originally, of course, Soviet studies have dictated to mean something very specific. Um, And in this case, there are two specific things. One is they act as gene switches. They are essentially the messages within food. Um, To me, it explains the epigenetics of food in a heartbeat within the food themselves as it were and secondly we can get into this and this is perhaps the most intriguing thing of them they bioregulate so what does that mean well if we take a sample of the thyroid if one is to take the thyroid um, peptide bioregulator one would find that if you are hypothyroid in other words you you have a weak thyroid you're not producing enough thyroid hormones it would activate the genes to actually make your thyroid gland produce more, Hmm. Um, which is great, obviously, very natural. But on the counter, if you were hyperthyroid, which is more unusual, but there's still plenty of people out there who are hyperthyroid. In other words, you're producing too many um, thyroid hormones. The same peptide, (laughs) through its bioregulation, will silence the gene and bring you down within this shall we call it optimal band seems seems to me like the way that you're describing these they almost sound a little bit like an adaptogen you know like like a reishi mushroom yeah. extract as an adaptogen would sometimes act in an excitatory manner if you were down but then also have a little bit of a calming effect if you were if you're too hyped up yeah absolutely good analogy uh, uh, to adaptogens and of course let's And in the same way that many adaptogens are, of course, natural in nature, let's just point out that these peptide bioregulators are in the foods. So, again, very, very natural. Um, We've written a book on one of the if people want to get a sort of sciencey deep dive book, then we have a book called Peptides in the Epigenetic Control of Aging, which really goes into detail. But at the same time, we have a light book for the public, which was called Peptide uh, the peptide bioreg- bioregulator revolution. Slight mouthful to say, but there it is. <laughs> yeah, I read I read that one last week. It's fantastic. That's great. Now, we tried in that book, in that book, I should say, really, um, to put very succinctly um, what is really over 40 years of Russian research. I think that staggers people. Let's be honest, many of the peptides, and I think peptides is the field to be in right now. It's very exciting. 
it's obviously got a big future. <clears throat> but the thing about many of them that are in use, they, they could be termed experimental. You know, there's still a lot unknown. The amazing thing about the 21 so far um, discovered peptide bioregulators is we can look back at over 40 years of Russian research. And if you want me to, Ben, that might be the moment where I can describe how they came into being. Yeah, I'd love to hear about this this Professor Kavinson guy. Because, you know, I've, I haven't mentioned him in my book, Boundless, in which I talk about peptides, even though I don't discuss peptide bioregulators as much. Uh, in, in the anti-aging chapter in that book, I introduce him and his work a little bit. But a lot of people aren't familiar with him or or, or how he's linked to these bioregulators. So, yeah, I'd love to hear a little bit more because it's 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 just so odd that it's been over in Russia for decades. And now it's just now like the new thing, at least over in the West. Yeah, ab- absolutely right. Um, well, Professor Kavinson is a very, how should we say, serious man in Russia. He's the head of the Institute of Biogerontology in St. Petersburg, which is a very, very well-respected institute, has many people working with it in all kinds of medical fields. And quite frankly, I think his work is deserving of a Nobel Prize. <clears throat> I know the politics at the moment won't dictate that. But um, if we go back to the 1980s, when, of course, the, we talk about the Soviet Union, he actually received a call direct from the Kremlin saying that they wanted him to find him and his team to find something that would help protect their troops. Um, they had a number of concerns. The first concern was that the submariners who were in nuclear submarines were basically aging fast. Perhaps no big surprise if you're sitting on the seabed for six months near a nuclear reactor. Um, and also they had people in missile silos, etc. And also there were certain battlefield weapons that had been developed by the Americans in one, which, which was a laser, which if shone onto the battlefield would blind anyone that saw it. So as a count, hmm. thankfully, it's never been used. Uh, but thank you know, there's so many of those nasty weapons on all, all sides. Yeah. But you know, they try and find a counter to it. So he was told, go away and find something that could help all these people. And, you know, their research took them down blind alleys. But eventually they stumbled on, I suppose, that there are these short chain peptides found in different foods that act as gene switches. And so over time, obviously, they did, you know, in vitro studies and then they did animal studies and eventually they did human studies. And it was found to be very effective in all kinds of conditions, so much so that eventually it was decided that their elite troops, their cosmonauts, and even their Olympic teams would start to use them. Um, and so over time, uh, it, so it, it started life as a military secret. That That's the bottom line. Hmm. Um, and they found all kinds of things were happening. I mean, for example, one of the problems they faced was cosmonauts going into space for long periods of time and coming back and being physically exhausted, uh, taking a long time to, uh, to readapt to the Earth's um, climate. Um, and they found that if they put them on the peptides, that these recovery periods were greatly shortened hmm. um, because one of the things they do is they induce protein synthesis. Um, and so it led, and of course today, and I think possibly for the last at least 15 years, they are actually sold on the Russian market. And when I say Russia, it's on the Russian speaking countries. So we are talking about places like Kazakhstan and, mm -hmm. and the Ukraine. Um, uh, they're sold as food supplements, at least the, the capsules are. Are they available as injections? Yes, they're also available as injections. Now, now when you say they're sold as food supplements, do, do, when when you use that term, is that different than the term supplements in terms of like their their regulatory status or something? I mean, they're they're considered to be food, like you could buy at the grocery store, for example. Well, I suppose um, it, in American perspective, we could consider them like the, under the Dietary Health and Supplement Act. Okay. So you okay. can go into uh, you know, a health food store or whatever and buy them in capsules. Got it. Uh, without prescriptions. Yeah, okay. without prescriptions. So so that's interesting. And then some of the work they do, which I'll be happy to go down any perspective you want me to go down, they, you know, they, it's everything from sort of like supporting health um, and, you know, not because, of course, the ultimate aim in anti-aging medicine is not to get sick, right? 
it, it's one thing to have something that's going to treat ill patients, but it's quite another to make sure we never get these problems in the first place. Um, and so, but they do also treat serious disorders with certain uh, certain types of them, and I'll get into that if you want me to. So that's where we are today. But of course, one of the one of the things that's um, slowed down the spread of this information is, of course, most of the information was in Russian, mm-hmm. um, which is very different to our Latin-based language. And so as a result of that, although I would say that possibly the majority of the Russian studies are now in English, not all of them are. Uh, and so in our own way, at IS and, and the you know company I work with, we've tried in our own way through our magazine, through our books, through our website to get this information out because there are literally dozens and dozens and dozens of human studies, including some of the biggest clinical trials you've ever heard of in your life. <laughs> really? Really. Would you like me to talk about that? Yeah, I'd love to hear a little bit more about these studies because – you know, even if you if you look on PubMed at some of Kavinson's work, he talks about these peptide bioregulators. And if you read the abstract, it says that he, he's paid some attention to the ability of them to increase lifespan and mm-hmm. inhibit carcinogenesis. When a term like increased lifespan is thrown around, I mean, that, that can mean a lot of things. So I'm, I'm curious about these studies and what was actually found, particularly when it comes to peptide bioregulators. And, and longevity or anti-aging, like a, like what we're talking about, humans versus rodents, and are we talking weeks, months, years, what they find? Mm, yeah, sure. Well, let's stick with humans, because that's probably the most interesting thing to talk about anyway, isn't it? <laughs> um, yeah. so of course, they went through the, the animal trials to get there, but they didn't just throw them at humans straight away. But um, with the human ones, there are two trials in particular that were conducted in the 80s and one just about crept into the 90s. Um, And the the biggest one was conducted with workers in Gazprom. And Gazprom, of course, is Russia's oil and gas industry. And they actually, wait for it, took 11,000 employees OK, wow. and they put 3000 of them on a control, though the 3000 guys, they got some vitamin capsules okay. um, and then the other uh, um, um, 8000, they received some peptides, which I'll go into. And what they followed them up, they did a one year follow up. And then in a smaller number, they did a six year follow up. And in a slightly smaller number, again, it was over a thousand people. They did a 12 year follow up. OK, so if you know anything about clinical trials, you know, those numbers are pretty incredible. And those lengths of time are pretty incredible as well. Yeah. What they found, bottom, bottom line, Ben, what they found is that the guys who took the peptides had one third of the morbidity of the control group and also in the longer trials, because, of course, we, you know, they started with people who were like in their 35, 45, 55 years old. And so some of these guys, when they followed up 12 years later, they were well into their retirement. And just to point out, these Gazprom people were in Siberia. Okay, so Mm. they were in a pretty tough environment that, you know, anyone who knows about um, life expectancy numbers will know that people in those kind of regions of Russia don't live as long as we do. They don't have the average of Western Europe or North America. So, um, so with that, the fact that they, the people on the peptides had one third of the, of the morbidity, in other words, they only had one third of the problems, uh, like, you know, disease disorder problems, and then one third of the death rate is absolutely staggering numbers. Um, that was repeated in a smaller trial of a, around 400 to 500 people in central Russia in a tractor factory, and they got very similar results. So it has been done twice. It's been done in large numbers of people. Um, and I am also can tell you that it's been done by a doctor in America called Bill Lawrence. And I'd like to, if you want to get into Bill's studies, I'd be happy to do that. Yeah, I've, I've emailed back and forth a few times with Bill. I never actually got him on the podcast, but he does have some pretty interesting studies. What's he been up to? Well, um, I'm very pleased to say that we ran um, a summit 
in, in here in England on English um, in September, the end of September, which we oh yeah that that's right. Uh, an, a, another guest who's been on the podcast, Doctor Matt Cook. He was over there. He said it was fantastic. Yeah, no, it's very kind. No, it was great to meet Matt as well. I, I've been in touch with Matt ever since, and um, we hope to do another one next year. So if people want to have a look into that, the Profound Health Summit, uh, end of September. Okay. But Bill came along from from Atlanta, and what Bill had done, um, he'd taken. He he was of course intrigued by these Russian studies, and he's been over there to Saint Petersburg, etc. And as indeed I have, um, and he found out that um, he said, "Well, I want to take some, you know, patients in." He he lives in the Atlanta area in Georgia, and he said, "I want to take a bunch of American patients and and kind of repeat this study and see what we do," but he kind of modernized it because. There are things obviously possible now that weren't possible in 1990. And I'll tell you what that is. Um, so he started with 39 patients. Um, and he said, I'm going to monitor these guys over three years. Um, he now has over 120 patients. And it might be worth noting that all his patients are doctors. <laughs> wow. They're all medical doctors. OK, so um, so what I can tell you and what he, of course, reported at our um at our summit and by the way those videos are available to watch so you can watch bill talking and and see his slides etc he was very very focused on what are probably the two most prominent anti-aging longevity um markers of the moment and those are telomere length mm -hmm. and dna methylation or right. the so-called horvath clock now if anyone knows about, I'll start with um, DNA methylation. Anyone who knows about that and, and the great work of Stephen Horvath will probably appreciate that it's probably the most accurate single bio age clock that we have. It's incredibly accurate. In fact, I've heard a rumor that some police forces are be using it when they let's say a murder has been um, perpetrated and they found some blood on the scene well what can you tell from that blood well you can tell the blood group and maybe the gender and what have you but if you haven't got the dna of of the perpetrator on file you don't know who that person is right right so what they apparently are doing with the horvath clock is they're excited because by using the horvath clock they can get that person's person's chronological age to within plus or minus four or five years. So they know if they're dealing with a 40-year-old, a 50-year-old, or whatever. Yeah, it's pretty so accurate. That, that's pretty – it is pretty accurate. Compared to anything else out there, that's really accurate. But Stephen Horvath admitted certainly a year or two ago, whether he's changed his mind since, I'm not sure – that really there was nothing out there that could reverse your DNA methylation age. So Bill – Lawrence, of course, focused very much on that. And what's absolutely fascinating is that all of his patients uh, in this three-year trial have lengthened their telomeres significantly and also have all improved their DNA methylation clocks. They've all reversed their DNA methylation age as well. So, and I think, um, although these different patients have been on a different cocktail, cocktail of peptides, um, because of their situation obviously you know like everything in life if you're going to fix it whether it's your car or whether it's yourself you start with your weakest points mm -hmm. kind of makes sense um so he he of course adjusted programs to the individual but i think and you know when i say i think this is also because of discussions with bill and other people and of course professor cavinson himself Pineal peptide could be the singular most important peptide of all. The pineal peptide. Uh, that is that, is that yeah, the, the one. They, they, are, they have great names. That that's the the pinealon one. Yeah. They, unfortunately, when it comes to the names, that that's when it gets like learning a new language because they change the names slightly dependent upon whether the, the peptide was naturally derived or synthetically produced, whether it's injected or taken orally and so on. Um, the most well-known name of the pineal peptide is epitalon. Uh, another name is epitalamin. Um, yeah, ep epitalon is the one that that's the one that they did the primary amount of actual anti-aging research on, right? Mm, that's right. That's right. And 
when we start to talk, think about what is the pineal, and this is a subject I love, uh, mainly because I used to work with um, a, a fantastic Italian doctor who's quite well known, who's called Dr. Walter Pierpoli, and Walter was responsible for writing all the early books about melatonin like the melatonin miracle and he's he's not only a doctor who well he's well retired now but he's not only a doctor who uh, was looking after the patients he did much of the research on mice as well mm -hmm. and the pioneer was a very fascinating and unusual gland and we all know of course it produces melatonin that's well known um and of course it's at the center of the brain uh, it's about pea-sized but of course what does melatonin do well just you know, nutshell, and this is Walter's words, not mine. He said, you know, I, I love stories. It's, I find it's a great way to remember things. And he said to me once, he said, um, the pineal gland is the conductor of the orchestra. And the orchestra is the endocrine system. OK, hmm. so he said, what do you have if you have an orchestra and you have no conductor? Well, you have noise. But if you have an orchestra with a conductor, you have music. And when you think about it, the purpose, of course, of melatonin is to tell the body when it's day, when it's night. And because, as you know, it's only produced um, in, the, in darkness. And so as a result, the different endocrine glands know when they should be pulsating their different hormones. Um, and of course, if you're screwed up because you're, you're flying on jets all the time, or you're a shift worker, perhaps, um, you know how bad it can get when your body doesn't know when it's day and when it's night. Um, so that's a fundamental part. So one of the interesting things about taking the pineal peptide a bioregulator is one sees improvement in endogenous melatonin production. But, but I think there's more to it than that, because what we're also seeing, I'm not aware of any studies that if you take melatonin as a supplement, that it will extend telomeres. If anyone out there does, I'd love to see them. Please send them in. But I'm not I'm not aware of any. So the fact that the pineal bioregulator also significantly extend telomeres shows that there are other actions taking place. All right, let's talk ketosis. When your body turns out ketones, it is a state of metabolic efficiency, mental clarity, improved athletic performance, better metabolic health. The reason for that is that ketones are 28 percent more efficient at generating energy than sugar alone. That means you can do more with less. And ketones are usually made when your body's pushed to the limits, when it's deprived of carbs, when it's fasted, when it's had a whole, whole bunch of fat, coconut oil and butter and all the things. But you can also, using the magic of science, shift yourself very rapidly into a state of ketosis that you'd normally have to fast for days to get into by supplementing with liquid ketones. You can usually drink ketones to do this. And there's one form of ketone brain fuel called ketone IQ, fittingly enough. And it is literally, quite literally, brain fuel. None of the insulin spikes or caffeine jitters or mid-afternoon energy crashes you get from most energy drinks. You just fuel with ketone IQ, one serving of this stuff, and it shifts you into the state of ketosis that you want. Again, without being fasted or restricting carbohydrates. So it's almost like you get to have your cake and eat it too. Or if you're already into ketosis and you want to put the icing on the cake and get even deeper into ketosis, this stuff works fantastically for that too. It's made by HVMN. They created this stuff through a $6 million contract from the U.S. Department of Defense, deep partnerships with some of the top researchers in the ketone industry. It's a cutting edge drink and you get 20% off. Here's how. Go to hvmn.com and use code BENG20. That gets you 20% off any purchase of Ketone IQ. That's an exclusive offer for my listeners only. hvmn.com forward slash BENG. It's called Ketone IQ by HVMN. All right, let's talk about the one supplement that I think is one of the most powerful supplements. It flies under the radar that is good for building lean muscle, enhancing athletic recovery, naturally boosting energy, backed by over 20 years of clinical research. And this stuff is something I discovered when I was racing Ironman triathlon, and it just turns out that it is basically the building blocks of life. 
And I'm not kidding. It's actually essential amino acids, all the ones your body needs because your body is 50% amino acids. And uh, the building blocks that amino acids give you, they're absolutely fundamental, not only for fitness, but for recovery, for satiating your appetite. Helps me to sleep better. It allows me to go for really long periods of time without eating oodles of calories. It's like the Swiss Army knife of supplementation. It's called aminos, Kion aminos, K-I-O-N. You go to getkion.com slash Ben to get this stuff at 20% off of monthly delivery and 10% off of a one-time purchase. Fantastic flavors. I personally like the berry, the watermelon, and the mango flavor. Those would be the top three to try, in my opinion. And you just put it in water. I mean, I dump the powder straight into my mouth pre-workout, and it's like a shot in the butt to go out and crush a workout. But it's great for a whole lot of stuff besides just a shot in the butt. So check them out. GetKion.com slash Ben. Get K-I-O-N.com slash Ben to get my fundamental supplement for fitness, Keon Aminos. All right. This is cool. You can join Team Ben Greenfield Life. We're currently hiring. You can check out our careers page at bengreenfieldlife.com slash careers. We got editorial position available. It's the editorial assistant for Ben Greenfield Life. You get to assist with and execute the full editorial strategy. That means things like blog, email, social media, copywriting, collaborate across different departments on all the written content, ensure that we have timely and appropriate development and delivery of digital content that conforms to editorial style, because I can't do that on my own. Lord knows all I can do is write. I'm horrible at managing the rest of it. I need an editorial assistant, so we're hiring one. BenGreenfieldLife.com slash careers is where you can apply We have a very creative and inspirational network and team. We live to empower people to live their bold, purpose-filled, and adventurous life with health, hope, happiness, and love. And our team is amazing and super fun, super fun to work with. So check it out. Go to bengreenfieldlife.com slash careers if you think you got the chops for this new editorial assistant position. Do you think that would be superior to just like a, because I interviewed a, a guy named Dr. John Laurence about this to uh, regular higher dose melatonin consumption or, or uh, supplementation? Well, I, I don't get me wrong. I love melatonin. I've taken it for many, many years myself. And I've often said to people that if you were put on a desert island and you could only take three things with you, you know, to do with your health, um, I would suggest that, and I'm not the only one, that melatonin would be one of them. Um, OK, we, you could argue we've got something else now. There is something else. I'm, uh, you, I'm sorry if I'm going down a different rabbit hole here for you. And me if I am. But I mean, no, this is this is all super interesting. Keep going. Oh, thank you. There is a the work of Professor Writer. That's E I T E R from the States. And he and his team discovered that um, tumors, cancer tumors only grow in the daytime. That's pretty profound, I think. I got a cancer research off. And, of course, one of the things that popped up early is why there is, of course, a hormone that is in us during um, day, uh, during darkness uh, at its peak between 1 o'clock and 3 o'clock in the morning, and that's melatonin, but it's not there in the daytime. And we do know that melatonin is one of the most powerful, if perhaps not the most powerful, antioxidant that we manufacture ourselves endogenous to me so with that in mind that why it has this effect because what am i going to say um people like dr frank schallenberger from and you can go and find frank on youtube great guy um he has a clinic in nevada and he and others but predominantly frank has perhaps been the most vocal um started giving their patients what can only be described as mega doses of melatonin. And this is because they found in, writer had found in animals in the daytime, which of course is not the time that any of us would normally take melatonin. If you're going to take a melatonin supplement, you take it before you go to bed. Um, They found the the cancer tumors, not saying they reversed, but evidence is they stopped growing. Hmm. A number of a number of patients taking somewhere between 180 to 240 milligrams of melatonin in daytime. And here's the crazy thing: they're doing. You broke up there for a second. You were talking about daytime melatonin. 
uh, supplementation, but I think it's super interesting because I, I did have a little discussion with Dr. Lawrence about this, and I'll link to it in the show notes, by the way, everybody. The show notes are at bengreenfieldlife.com slash M-I-C-A-N-S. And uh, he pointed out the fact that even if you're using daytime melatonin, uh, and, and he actually has both a, a suppository and an oral version, that as long as you know photons of light are hitting the retina, you don't get the the fatigue or the sleepiness that you'd expect from from daytime melatonin supplementation. Yeah, you know that is, that, that could be. In fact, one of the ways I advise patients is, is is if they've overdosed on their melatonin and they're feeling very drowsy in the morning, I say get out and get the sunlight. Just get out and get the sunlight, and yeah. you, you, that drowsiness will should, should soon dissipate. Um, there are a few other things. Uh, Dr. Thierry Hertog does a great series on hormones. You know, he's one of the world experts in hormones, no doubt about that. And he has a whole way of improving melatonin. I mean, caffeine, for example, suppresses melatonin production. So don't drink too much caffeine and uh, things like that. But what I wanted to point out was the writer's work um, and Frank Shalom messages of melatonin could be a very significant Okay. So that's that's exciting, obviously. Um, but it's also showing the power of the pineal, essentially. That's really what I wanted to uh, to point out. And Brian Light, again, the inefficient in studies again, uh, I seem to spend a lot of my time looking at their stuff. Um, that, that doesn't affect melatonin production, because one of the classic problems is if we go to bed at night and we don't put ourselves in a black room, i.e. we've got two thin curtains and the street light or our partner is reading a book or whatever uh, uh, is of course any light entering the light it will destroy our own melatonin production um, so that's that's an issue but with the exception of one light according to the russian studies and that's lunar light and uh, when you think about it that's not unusual is it because when our forebears were roaming around looking for food and then night came and they slept under the trees We'd have been surrounded by moon and starlight, wouldn't we? So that kind of light doesn't affect our melatonin production. So there we are. <laughs> this is super interesting. Now, we, we've got the, the penny allen that you talked about and the epithalamin, which was the big anti-aging one. It sounds like those two alone would be fantastic. But then there, there's all sorts of others. There's there's thymolin for the thymus. There, there's cortexin for, for the cerebral cortex. There's retinalamin and and well, correct me if i'm wrong for how many different peptide bioregulators are there that you're aware of well that commercially there are 21 and then there are also okay. now beginning to be combinations of them as well so that's beginning to happen so rather than just taking one peptide but they might have ones with mixed with two or three um so they are they are growing in number almost daily Okay, so when you take these bioregulators, it's my understanding that they actually go to and act upon the cells that are related to, to the different organs that each of the peptide bioregulators is indicated for. Yeah. How does that even happen? Like, like how, how is it that the bioregulators know where to go, so to speak? Does that make sense? Yeah, I know. It does make sense. And, and again, if anyone wants to go um, through your website there, Ben, and come in and get the videos, you can see Professor Cavinson showing some of his remarkable slides um, in fact, the audience was was wearing 3D glasses at one point, <laughs> which made it even more interesting. Um, but basically, these peptides, they're nano. That's the first thing to remember to know about them. They're, you know, they're small, in other words, and they interact directly with DNA. They go directly to the DNA, but they're not changing DNA. Let's let's make sure that's not the case. It's changing DNA methylation. They are essentially act as gene switches so that either and they can and because of the bioregulation part of it as described earlier they're either activating or genes okay and of course it's those genes that are specific to the organ in question okay so it's a it's an i've got to tell you i hope you don't mind me i've got to tell you one of my favorite stories okay i've got to tell you the moment of my awakening my epiphany if you will okay so Back in 1980, when I did my first um, uh, degree in London, um, and I did what was called then food and vitamin technology, vitamin technology, sorry, British colloquialism thing in there. Um, the <laughs> professor put up on the uh, on the board a pie chart, 
and he said this is what you typically find in food and then we had certain percentages right so there was a certain percentage of vitamins and then minerals and then oils and which i prefer to call them oils and fats uh, and fiber and so on and fiber was the biggest part of the pie chart it was something like 55 percent, something like that and in 1980 nobody was really strong on fiber okay i know things are different now but i had a little thought in my mind that day and i said to myself gosh that's a lot of fiber i believe that nature wastes nothing why is there so much fiber in food what what's the importance of fiber um that was one thought i had the second thought i had was or maybe there's some other stuff in food that they don't know about that does other things so fast forward to about 2008 or so when i first heard professor cavinson lecture um and i was in istanbul actually and i heard him lecture and he described these short chapters and epigenetic control, their gene switches found within food. And for me, it was the light bulb moment because I suddenly took me back to that day in, in London when I said to myself, there are other things in food. And explain genetics in a heartbeat to me. Um, and I, I was so dumbfounded by it that it came up to the coffee break after his lecture. I actually just sat in the auditorium trying to digest what I just heard. And that on the path to today, where I've, you know, tried to find out as much as I can about these things. So they're very fundamental. They're very fundamental. They go right down to the core, as it were. Now, now with, with each of the different bioregulators targeting specific organs, in the past, when I've tried peptide bioregulators, because I, you know, they're not something that I've used regularly, but. Uh, you know, at one point, uh, doc, Dr. Cook had me try some uh, at another point that, well, well, you you had sent me a few. But the instructions that I received when I got peptide bioregulators was like, take them all. You you basically, you know, and, and so you're swallowing like 30 yeah. different capsules that target each of these specific organs. And it seems yeah. like a lot of stuff to take. Is, is that considered to be like a gold standard anti-aging or longevity or full body support program is to just get all the bioregulators and take, you know, all, all 21 of them. Cause it's like, you know, four to six capsules, of 21 different bioregulators. It seems like a lot of stuff to take. No, I, I don't think the average person needs to go to that extreme. I think life is the same, whatever we look at, right. It's, it comes down to cost and convenience, whatever it is in life. We're, we're challenged by cost and convenience. And one of the challenges with anti-aging uh, and maybe it will always be the case, who knows, is where do you start and where do you stop? Because, you know, how far do you want to go? Now, I'm aware that in Dr. Lawrence's trials that some of his patients are consuming somewhere in the region of 120 boxes of different um, peptide bioregulators every year. Now, each box has 20 capsules. So come into the dosing when you want. But those either the people who don't mind the cost and, and inconvenience of that, or they've got systemic problems. However, um, I would suggest, and, it, and of course it does somewhat depend on how ill you are. If you have a patient that's truly ill, obviously that is going to be a much more extreme program. If you have someone who's generally fit and healthy, but wants to put an edge on it or keep it that way, then the numbers go down dramatically. And one of the really good bits of news about these peptide bioregulators is because they act essentially as gene switches, you do not need to take them every day. OK, so okay. my particular program, and I would suggest that a lot of, depends how old you are as well. I mean, I'm in my I'm in my 60s, so I'm going to be taking more than some guys in his 30s. Right. So um, but essentially what you've uh, got to think about as a typical program would be two capsules a day, okay, 10 days a month. So you're not taking them every single day, all right? Now, if you are generally in decent shape and you just keep an edge on it, that same regimen, that's two capsules a day for 10 days, can be done every three months. So now we're getting really into quite small numbers, okay? And I have heard of people going down to six months. 
All right. So you don't need to take these. I think the only people who would take them every day is when they've got some relatively serious condition that they want to address. And I, we can get into some of the, the deep clinicals if you want. Um, so then the challenge becomes, OK, understood. We only need 20 capsules a month or every two months or even every three months. Which ones do I take? Well, like everything in life, if we think a human being is a machine, a very complicated machine, but nonetheless a machine, like all machines, we are as strong as our weakest part. So if one can know where your weak points are, OK, and obviously I'm sure you've done many podcasts on understanding one's health, um, so I won't go there. But if you know what your weak points are or if you don't know what your own weak points are, do you know what your family's weak points are? you know, diabetes, cancer, heart disease, whatever it is, um, you can kind of focus on that. And so you can you can guide yourself on the necessary on the necessary peptide. So in other words, you don't need all 21 of them. OK, so but I would suggest uh, and these are the three I take regularly because of the original Soviet studies, very large studies that showed you know, one reducing morbidity and mortality to one third. Principally, there were three peptides and those three peptides were the pineal, which we've discussed, um, the blood vessel, which kind of makes sense, because if you're improving blood flow in the body, what doesn't it help? And the thymus. And of course, the thymus. And, and what's what's the uh, what's the blood vessel one called? Um the um oh you're gonna catch me out there ventford oh got it <laughs> okay ventford. okay so um so you know so and you've also got the thymus uh as well and of course i'm sure you're probably aware of the work of um dr greg fahi in rejuvenating the thymus um yeah. which was with growth hormone um in that case but of course the thymus holds a kind of special place because it is the first gland to a trophy in age. And it typically happens as we reach puberty. So some people say that is the signal, you know, the theory of why do we age? Why do, why do things deteriorate? Well, if you reach puberty, you've become uh, of reproductive age. Nature doesn't want you anymore. <laughs> That's a theory. Um, and the first gland to start shrinking is the thymus. And of course, if you have a healthy thymus, you've got um, good immunity. And by the way, the thymus produces uh, 13 thymic hormones, all of which are peptides. <laughs> wow. Interesting. Okay. So so those three, uh, the the one for the blood vessels, the one for the pineal gland, and the, uh, and the one for the thymus would be, mm -hmm. if you were going to do like 10 days out of the month the ones that you think would be the best to take yeah that's what i do okay and i find it easy because what i do you know because we've all got our, our regimens in the morning and and i get up and i've got my peptide bioregulators there and i know i'm taking one that day so i've got two capsules and then once i've got rid of that box that 20 capsules i'm on to the next one so i know i know some months have got more than 30 oh, okay. days in them but i can almost wake up every month and say what's my peptide bioregulator for today Okay, yeah, and you aren't, you aren't taking all three at the same no. time. Then you're you're taking one for for on one day, and then you and after ten days you switch to the next one. You got it. Okay. Now the only other thing I do on top of that, Ben, and I say this is, you know, this can change from person to person. I'm not saying to everybody out there this is absolutely the thing for you. Um, and you know, every three months I try and do a bit of a detox. Okay, go into that if you want me to. I do other things, but um, as part of that detox. On that third month, I will add three more peptide bioregulators and I add the liver, the kidney. And because of my own personal weakness, I add the pancreas. OK, OK, got it. And by the way, for those of you listening and I am taking notes and I'll I'll put all this in the, in the show notes so you guys can kind of see what what Phil's protocol looks like. Now, a lot of people who have taken peptides before, they uh, have to inject them you know, draw them up right. into an insulin syringe and sometimes reconstitute. Why is it that you don't need to inject these bioregulators? Is it the size is so small, they're just very well orally absorbed? Yes, they are. And the studies have been done because, of course, that's the classic problem, you know, is that 
it, it's um, it, well have, again i've got a little story here for you um you know say a bodybuilder for example they're going to consume a lot of protein now if they want to do that through food then they're going to eat a lot of steak or a lot of salmon or whatever but the question is how does the bodybuilder put on that muscle mass when in theory all that protein is destroyed in the stomach right because the chain's too long um and i think the answer to that protein gets broken down into peptide bioregulators because we know that some of these peptide bioregulators induce protein synthesis that's what they do so it is fundamentally because they are very small they're very small in terms of the chain two three or four amino acids and they're actually the molecules are very small because they're nano sized so and the russians have all the studies that show that they are absorbed so the reason that the peptide bioregulators are most fascinating is can they be injected yes they can be injected are they more potent if they're injected yes they're more potent if they're injected however they are bioactive orally so that's the good news of them okay interesting now th there's also this whole field of uh organ extracts you know there's companies like um probably one of the most popular is like ancestral supplements there's other companies like heart and soil or paleo valley and they sell you know, spleen and pancreas and thyroid and heart and, and brain and, and, you know, and bone marrow. And you're supposed to take these supplements based on the hypothesis of like supports like that each of these different organs and the peptides contained within those organ supplements are going to travel to the, the desired area. Very similar to what we were just talking about with bioregulators and support that area. Mm -hmm. Now, why why would someone not just use like an organ extract supplement instead of a peptide bioregulator? Okay. Well, you know, it, it takes us um, back to the question. I, I view health as a pyramid. Um, and you've got a base of that pyramid. And that base is big, obviously, because the base is a pyramid. Um, and that's where we should be doing all the things we all know, eat good food, you know, exercise regularly, lead a good lifestyle, et cetera, et cetera. And then as you go up the pyramid, you, you, you can start to add in until you get to the tip of the pyramid where you might be talking about, you know, stem cells and goodness knows what. So it all start, I mean, we could take that one step back then and say, well, why don't you just eat good food? <laughs> um, so, and there's, and of course <laughs> that's fundamental and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. Just very briefly, there was a guy called Weston Price, who back in the 20s, 30s and 40s, went around the world um, looking for native tribes, you know, p tribes that have long since disappeared now, and studied their lifestyles. And he found, for example, that tribes that ate the necks of animals had very, very little thyroid issues. So that leads us to presume that by consuming the thyroid itself, that they were helping themselves to improve their own thyroid conditions. And that leads us back to organ extracts, right? Because that's that's what they are. And of course, in the 20s and 30s, and um, organ extracts were de rigor. They were the thing that the the innovative physician then would have been giving you. And they make improvements. There's no There's no doubt about that. And I would hazard a guess that when you take the food or when you take the extract, you are getting some of these peptide bioregulators. But of course, if you take the concentrated peptide bioregulator, you're getting a very concentrated form and a very pure form. So, okay. you know, it's a bit like saying, I'm going to try and put it in. I always use car analogies. I try to. There's nothing wrong with a Ford, right? It's going to get you around town. It's going to do the job. But the Ferrari is going to be that bit better, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that that makes sense. So you're just basically you're, you're getting a little bit more efficiency and probably more bioavailability with this with the smaller bioregulators. Now, uh, you you uh, you implied that, of course, these are big in Russia and have been for some time. And when you go over to the U.S. and you order peptides, let's say online there is a lot of fear that they might be tainted, that they might not have in them what they say they have in them. And I think that that just like almost like the you know the underground steroid industry or something like that, they're rife with with corruption. 
And so in many cases, people will go to a physician and the physician will prescribe them the peptide. And there are some websites that reportedly sell decent peptides like uh, Can Labs or Peptide Sciences, for example. But when it comes to bioregulators, is it kind of the same thing? Like, do you have to be careful where you actually purchase these things? Because if I do, a, if I were to do a Google search for peptide bioregulators, I could find probably a dozen different sites that, that sell these things. Mm. Well, I can't argue with that. And you're, you're absolutely right. It is. I'm not going to speak for bioregulators, but the peptide field is a bit wild west at the moment. And, you know, when you see a site that is selling vials of powder and clearly states that they're not for human use and for research and development only, hmm, you know, what backups have you got? What security have you got? Uh, because I can assure you there'll be no liability insurance on that site because yeah, no, no, no insurer will give you that when you make such statements. So, Obviously, you're going to have links on your site, Ben, where people can get the real thing. Um, so I'll leave that to that. But yes, there are different outlets selling it. I mean, there's specific packaging. Here in England, we have a brand that's called Nature's Marbles, um, and it's all produced at ISO CGMP standards. And of course, they're still made in, they are made in Russia to those standards. And I've seen, I've been over there and seen it for myself. So because you can argue that the peptide bioregulators, at least in Eastern Europe, are already in a mass market situation. Um, I can't speak for every single company because, you know, we'd have to take one, each one as it comes along. But um, what I think is exciting is it, it looks likely in the coming year or two that more countries, and including the states, where these correct products will be actually on the market officially so you know that's about the nearest we can get to knowing that the companies that are producing them are doing it to all the correct standards one thing i should point out that i think is very exciting is with with only very very few exceptions the russians estimate that they have um um, treated over a million, if that's the right word, over a million people with these peptide bioregulators. Okay, so it wow. has enormous use. In fact, Professor Cavinson told me that something like a hundred million capsules of peptide bioregulators have been consumed. Wow. Okay, in humans. Wow. Wow. So, with that in mind, they've seen no side effects. Isn't that fascinating? No side That's effects. That's amazing. Well, 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 they're they're just they're 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 so small, you know, and, and yeah. of course they're they're so precise. You know, we're talking about, you know, something like a, almost like a a robotic minimally invasive surgery versus a you know a, a, a bloody butcher fest. So yeah, that mm -hmm. does surprise me that that they're that they're not associated with those type of side effects. So n now when it comes to your protocol, you talked about how you're doing these bioregulators and then occasionally throwing in like a detoxification bioregulator support for the liver and the kidney you know you you have this whole magazine the aging matters magazine you obviously did that conference you talked to a lot of people in the industry i'm just kind of curious are there other things besides bioregulators that are big wins for you in the anti-aging department that you've come mm -hmm. across and all the discussions that i'm sure you've had the opportunity to have Mm. Well, you can imagine, Ben, I, I get sucked into all kinds of rabbit holes um, and sometimes they're fads and sometimes they, they get traction. I mean, there are a lot of biochemical pathways. I mean, the, a hottie at the moment, of course, is to improve NAD levels mm -hmm. since the work of David Sinclair. Um, I love the work. I love what Bill Falloon does at Life Extension. He's always on the ball showing people the way forward. Um, and he has what he describes as um, uh, the stair-step approach to biological age control. And there are a number of steps on that. So, for example, I think step one, actually, is to um, activate AMPK. And the number one drug to do that is metformin. So, uh, which is in two clinical trials at the moment, as I'm sure you know. So, I mean, there are other things that will activate AMPK. It doesn't have to be yeah. metformin. Yeah, yeah. dihydrobear brain is another good one. Yeah. Gynostemma also. Gynostemma, is that, that one kind of flies under the radar, is also a really, really good AMPK precursor. So, yeah, nice. there, are, there are alternatives to metformin, of course, which is good for people who don't want to 
you know, get that slight decrease in VO2 max or mitochondrial production or, you know, for people who get stomach upset on it. But yeah, anything that increases AMPK, I, I agree. That's got a, a really potent anti-aging effect. Yes. And then you've got NAD as, a, as another plan. I'm sure you know the supplements like NMM and NR. It's quite controversial at the moment because of what's going on in the States. I'm sure you know about that. Yeah. You, you mean the breast cancer scare about uh, well, the NR associated with breast cancer? Well, there's also pressure by the FDA to remove um, NMM from the marketplace as a supplement because um, a company has put in a, 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 an IND for it. So they say, well, if somebody wants to make it a drug, it can't be a supplement. Yeah. So that's going on as well. Um, another step would be um, senescence, um, you know, how to remove senescent cells from the body. Um, and again, you've got different substances here. Um, you know, you've got your, your quercetin or your fisetin or, or you've got drugs like dasatinib, of course. Um, another step, which is gaining a lot of interest from the, especially from the sort of research community is mTOR. And, uh, and the big drug there, of course, that everyone's kind of hot to trot on is uh, rapamycin, um, and there's a whole bunch of other stuff in the middle, you know, whether it's resveratrol or other things. Um, yeah. But, but what, what about, what about practices? I mean, obviously like NAD, AMPK, uh, peptide bioregulators and, uh, some of the anti-senescent compounds, these, these I think are all, you know, pretty well proven and, and in many cases well known for their longevity enhancing properties. But what about any lifestyle practices you know whether right. it's hyperbaric or infrared light or specific forms of of, right. of exercise like do you dabble around with any of those type of things for the, well, for the people who are going to say what can i do besides popping pills oh absolutely no no don't don't get me wrong i'm, I'm not here as a pill pusher um you know um, we just happen to be talking about this specific subject yeah um you're absolutely right there are always natural ways i mean like if we look at telomeres as one example, although it seems to be very hard to extend telomeres, there are plenty of processes that will, you know, n not make them shorten as quickly. And that can be from uh, good exercise, good food, and various uh, vitamins as well have been shown in that department. There's one story I'd like to tell you, uh, Ben, which normally staggers people when they hear it. And it's very simple and it's something that nearly everyone can do for very, very little cost or no cost at all. Um, and although it mainly affects men more than women, but men up to the age of about 50 have twice the risk of a heart attack or a stroke as opposed to women of the same age. OK, but past the age of about 50, women catch us up and even overtake us. So what's going on? Well, what's going on is, of course, up to about the age of 50, women eventually go through menopause and, of course, their menstrual cycle stops. So, OK, I know we can argue that their change in estrogen, they lose some of the protection that estrogen offers them in that regard. But by stopping their menstruation, two other things are going on. Um, their menstrual cycle, two other things are going on. One they are not releasing some toxins every month. Okay, can argue that. And they're not thinning their blood because by the release of blood, we're forcing our bone marrow to produce more blood. Okay, let's take that for a moment. So, all right, fair enough. Well, what about men? Well, here are the figures. If you go to the blood bank and you donate a pint of blood every six months, the statistics show that a man halves his risk of a heart attack or stroke just by donating a pint of blood every six months. Yeah. And that goes, that follows in line with what the ladies are doing. The ladies are giving a little bit every, every month. We, we have to give a little bit more every six months and it's blood thinning. So that's quite high on my list. Okay. Yeah. And, and by the way, I, I think that you can get some, of those effects through uh, both endurance exercise and regular use of a sauna, just because you also mm -hmm. see some red blood cell turnover and kind of like a staving off of some of the accumulation of iron from both of those practices as well. You know, I, I don't give blood much, but I do, I have a pretty robust sauna practice, you know, infrared sauna four to five times a week and also engage in frequent aerobic exercise. And I think that helps out quite a bit as well. Oh. Totally agree, Ben. I'm a sauna addict. I don't go quite as often as you, but I try and go once a week. Um, 
And um, so absolutely. And of course, the sauna, the sweat is taking out a lot of a lot of things. As you, I think you said, you mentioned lead and iron and things like that as well. Um, so that's all that's all good stuff to do. And the infrared, it's also very effective. So, yeah, absolutely. Those are, and sweating in general. If you go and do aerobic exercise, you're going to sweat. So <laughs> that's going on as well. Um, so, no, that's a very simple thing. There are other things, of course, I, I would anyone interested in this subject, I would say go and look at the book of the unfortunately, it's the late cardiologist, um, uh, uh, Kenneth Kenzie. American cardiologist, and he wrote a book some years old now called The Blood Thinner Cure. And he looked at all, he evaluated all the kind of markers in blood that the doctors look for to, you know, cholesterol, homocysteine, triglycerides, C-reactive protein, and so on and so on and so on. And at the end of the book, he basically came out and he said the two most Im- biggest risk factors for having a heart attack or stroke, bar none, were your blood viscosity and your arterial stiffness. So in other Mm. words, if you have relatively thin blood and you have relatively soft arteries, your risk of heart attack or stroke is minimal, despite any other marker. And as we've already talked about giving blood or, you know, saunas or using enzymes. I'm a big fan of enzymes. Uh, I personally use lumbrokinase, which I'm sure you know is the earthworm enzyme. Um, seems to be very effective. Um, yeah. So that's one of my favorites. And I do yeah. chelation. And, and I, I do quite a bit of that as well. We we do uh, one of my supplement companies, uh, Keon, we have a product with proteolytic enzymes and serapeptase and silkworm extract uh-huh. in it. And that nice. that's a very similar effect. I like that at higher doses for breaking down biofilm, but then at lower doses, yeah, for some of the fiber and clot reduction effects, it's a, it's a pretty powerful supplement. Yeah, oh, I, that's a nice one. We can't get that in Europe because it's a novel food, but that's another yeah. story. <laughs> yeah. Um, but no, that's all. That's all good stuff. So there are simple things that folks can do um, with to little to no cost. I think you even get paid in the states to donate blood, don't you? We only get tea and biscuits. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> donate all sorts of all sorts of fluid for some extra cash. <laughs> well, you, you know, you, you have you have quite the protocol. Now, this Aging Matters magazine, I would imagine you report a lot of this stuff in that is that a print magazine or is that online only no it's both ben um we it is online and online it's free you can download it for nothing oh really but we we recently um have started selling them on uh, as print so they're ten dollars a copy if anyone wants them and so you could actually use the website and go through to a store where you can get those and we don't charge for mailing so it's ten dollars wherever you live in the world okay yeah, we tr- we've done about um, we've done about forty or maybe more than that, forty five. And I I try to do them every quarter. Of course, in the last couple of years, that didn't quite go to plan. <laughs> but then we all know what happened in the last couple of years. Yeah. But we have yeah. we we did have a recent, a very recent copy, um, which which we which we on the front cover is called Hacking Aging with Peptides. Was a, was a, it was a deep delve, and that's really reporting on what Bill Lawrence his study has been showing with these yeah. peptides. Yeah, I'm looking I'm looking at the cover now. It looks like you got Jonathan Wright discussing niacinamide and Ward Dean, Bill Lawrence about biological age and yeah, hacking age peptides. Very cool. So that would be a good one for people to download for even more on the peptides. And then I'm also going to link to your website and some of these fantastic books you've written. The the peptide bioregular revolution would be a really good one for people to wrap their heads around this as well. Um, I'm still working on putting together the sourcing for the peptide bioregulators and I'll put that in the show notes as well. And so I'll, I'll put all this over at bengreenfieldlife.com slash M I C A N S for any of you who want to take a deeper dive, or if you want to ask, ask your, your questions or your comments, you have more feedback for Phil or I, you can pop in over there and, and ask away. But I, I personally plan on on getting back onto some kind of a well structured bioregulator protocol. So I'm going to go through my notes, uh, especially after you laid out your protocol, Phil, and probably start back into something. Just because the couple of times I have done, I actually felt really fantastic as far as energy and sleep and recovery. And so uh, then, uh, honestly, for a little bit of time, I started getting into organ extract supplements as well. But you've you've reinitiated my interest in these bioregulators, so I'm going to have to jump back on the bandwagon because they're just absolutely fascinating and i think that the research especially all this russian research that commits and does it doesn't lie so so i i appreciate you coming on the show and sharing all this stuff with us 
No, Ben, it's been, it's been fantastic, really enjoyable. And I don't know how much time we have left because I didn't tell you about the eyesight side of the equation. But um, oh yeah, actually, just just real quick, we got a, we got a few minutes because you did send me over some of those eye drops. And, you know, my eyesight's great. You know, knock on wood, but. My wife started using them, and, and uh, I told her that they had some good research on them for saving or improving vision. But what, what exactly are the eye drops? Yeah, well, what you're talking about is uh, CAN-C, which is an eye drop containing N-acetylcarnosine, uh, which is a peptide, a dipeptide. And believe it or not, this is also Russian research, um, although a different institute. Um, and what they've been doing in, in Russia is basically reversing cataract with them. So the, the clinical trials have shown that people who put two drops twice a day in their eyes for sort of five, six months, at least about 80 to 89 percent of the people, because like most things in life, it doesn't necessarily work for everybody, will actually either reduce or even remove their cataracts. So, wow. And the Russians designed it specifically as a non-surgical approach because one of the problems with cataract, as the world is aging, we all know there's more older people on the planet. They woke up and said, hang on, we may not even have. It's so prevalent, like one in five people over 50 get cataracts. They were worried they wouldn't even have enough surgeons to do the operations every day. So this is where that research came from. Um, all this is described in another little booklet. I hope you've got a copy of it called Eyesight Saviors. Yeah, I got that one. I didn't read it yet, but it's over here on my shelf. Great. And in there are also the peptides for the eyesight and you're going to be flabbergasted at that, which it, which is including reversal of age-related macular degeneration and also a rather rare but almost untreatable eye disease called retinosal pigmentosa and um, all being reversed in, in, Russian, in Russian clinics with these peptides. Wow. Wow. And, and, and for those, those eye drops, you just apply them daily? Yeah, just apply daily. They do have other benefits. It's it's not just senile cataract, uh, as it's called. Um, it, it also uh, can reduce glaucoma. And I, I don't know if we've got time to explain why, but some effect in there. And also quite effective for people suffering with diabetic retinopathy as well. Hmm. Interesting. Okay, so so these are, and those aren't bioregulators. That, that's just like a mix of different vitamins and nutrients for the eyes, right? It, well, it is a peptide, but it's okay. not being classified as a bioregulator. It, it's basically getting back to one of my favorite peptides, actually, is carnosin, not to be confused with carnitin, yeah. but carnosin. But you have to use the n acetylated. You can't make carnosin up into an eye drop and put it in your eye. It won't get into the eye. So you have to use a very specific form. Uh, so it gets it because, of course, the lens is sitting within a capsule surrounded by a fluid called the aqueous humor so you have to get the carnosine into that into that place yeah yeah okay got it well i'll i'll, I'll link to those eye drops as well for people who want and they're called can see right that's right yeah okay cool so if you go to bengreenfieldlife.com slash mike and it'll take me a while to take i i always write down all these notes while i'm chatting but i'll pull them all together and they'll all be over there for you guys and uh you can also of course ask any of your follow-ups over there Phil, thanks so much for coming on the show and sharing all this stuff with us. Your wealth of knowledge, and I can't wait to take a deeper dive into your magazine and some of these other resources you talked about. Ben, it's been an absolute pleasure. I've thoroughly enjoyed it, and I hope to get to meet you in person one of these days. I hope so, too. That'll be fun. Maybe I'll make it over there to Russia. That's a, it's a place I've wanted to visit for some time anyway. So, uh, it, it, Is that where you guys are doing the conference, in Russia, or is it just over in Europe? No. No, we're doing well at the moment, of course, <clears throat> you know, um, it's difficult to do anything over there. No, we're, we're, we're doing the conferences, our own personal conferences in England. Oh, okay. Uh, so that, that makes life a little bit easier. Okay. But we, I do travel a, a bit. I'll, 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 when you and I chat privately, I can tell you my private schedule. If you want to meet me up, I'm gonna, I'll probably be in Bahamas in uh, April and other places around all around the States. Okay. Well, I'm sure our paths are going to cross soon. We have a lot of a lot of mutual interests and friends. So in the meantime, though, for those of you listening, bengreenfieldlife.com slash M-I-C-A-N-S. Until next time, I'm Ben Greenfield along with Phil Mikens signing out from bengreenfieldlife.com. Have an amazing week. One thing you should know that's super cool is that on the evening of March 11th, in Sedona, I'm hosting a VIP dinner that's catered by me and my family using a bunch of biohacked recipes from my Boundless Cookbook, 
live music, an intimate Q&A, and an absolutely unforgettable once-in-a-lifetime taste but entertaining experience where you just come and hang out with me. Regardless of whether or not you go to the event that I'll be teaching at there at Shine in Sedona uh, from March 10th through the 12th, you're in for the VIP dinner. With only 25 seats available, this thing's going to fill up fast. It's a VIP dinner, only a select few. We want to keep this small, intimate, but super fun with amazing food. So if you want to get on the VIP dinner as a part of this event that I'm doing down in Sedona, go to bengreenfieldspeaking.com forward slash Sedona dash dinner. bengreenfieldspeaking.com forward slash Sedona dash dinner. More than ever these days, people like you and me need a fresh, entertaining, well-informed, and often outside-the-box approach to discovering the health and happiness and hope that we all crave. So I hope I've been able to do that for you on this episode today. And if you liked it, or if you love what I'm up to, then please leave me a review on your preferred podcast listening channel, wherever that might be. And just find the Ben Greenfield Life episode. Say something nice. Thanks so much. It means a lot.